It's good to think about death sometimes. We're all dying. That started immediately we took our first breath as babies. It's the single most obvious fact of life is that it ends. And as we get closer and closer to that event, it becomes more and more of an imperative to have some sense of what to expect. Expectation significantly directs where we're going. Attention is what we follow. Energy follows attention. So not only in direction, but also in quality. So if you're looking in the wrong direction or with the wrong attitude, then you'll get a suboptimal outcome. And when it comes to where you go next after leaving this world, there isn't anything more important than that. We could even say that that's the most important thing that we ever do, and that is to hold a certain mindset as we breathe our last breath. That is the purpose of everything that preceded it. It's actually profoundly helpful to understand that there's nothing really of importance in life except for the training you need to do for yourself, to yourself. To breathe that last out breath with a certain attitude of mind. That's a very high achievement to feel good as you breathe that last breath. One of the greatest gifts, perhaps the greatest I've ever received, is the Sufi teachings on this topic of death and dying, therefore, and living, therefore. Not only from my Sufi guidance, but also in some readings, there are books on the subject. The Tibetan book of living and dying, for example, is one. Um, Conversations with God. Neil... Donald Walsh, very good, the tenth book in the series. And um, so I've shaped my uh, model, my opinion, my belief about what happens next from various sources, but those are the main ones. And I can share the, those thoughts with you now. Um, as we take our last breath, the first thing that arises is that we notice that the last breath has occurred. We see our physical body is no longer breathing. The heart is no longer beating. And we see that. And because the we that we identify with, I am I, looking at that thing which was my body, it just makes it really clear that death is nothing to do with the physical body, that consciousness itself is not invested in the physical body and we see that immediately there's this just no negotiating about that there's your dead body and you still exist now that process of detaching yourself from physical identification i am my body is a very strong physical attachment that people have often to let go of that that, that could be difficult for some people but if you know it's going to happen it's a lot easier, and that's why I say it's really good for us to think about death, so that we're preparing ourselves for the most important journey of our lives. You wouldn't go anywhere else. You wouldn't travel to Paris or Los Angeles without packing a few things in your suitcase. So pack a few things in your suitcase now by coming up with some ideas about what you choose to expect. There is choice in this. There is expectation in this, and your expectation substantively changes your experience. Basically, when you leave attachment to the physical body and you become a spirit, shall we call it, you're met then by whoever you've imagined. If, if your idea is that you'll see St. Peter at the pearly gates, then that's what will happen. If, like me, I've decided to be taken on the back of a unicorn forward. I, 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 I'm training my mind to expect something which is slightly mysterious and mystical and fun, a, a little bit of humour. I will know that this unicorn is my imaginary unicorn, but I will be approaching the, the, the future of my life after this one 
with a sense of yeah, um, mischievous fun. I, I don't know. So I, I seriously believe in unicorns. I don't think they're very often seen in the physical world, but I wouldn't deny the possibility. And I, I don't know whether that makes me silly or mad or whatever, but that's the truth of it. So for me to be met by a unicorn when I leave this body, would, well, it seems like good fun to me. And, and I think that's a good way to approach death. You know, what control do we have over what comes next? Very little. And most people would say none at all. Well, I refute that. I, I don't believe that free will is conditional upon this particular lifetime. It's nonsense. Free will must be eternal and absolute, or it makes no sense. So, whatever you want to happen after death makes a considerable difference to what must happen. And there are certain you know, constraints, but um, the choices that we have, the free will that we have, makes those constraints secondary, not primary. That's the whole thing about free will. There are terms of reference which enables us to relate to other people and, and other, other things like God and stuff. We've got uh, a term, terms of reference which holds on to the integrity of the model of reality. You can't just make up nonsense and think that it checks out. It doesn't check out if it's nonsense. It, it's not sensible. It, rationality makes good sense for building a model that works. So anyway, that's what I'm doing. I'm creating a model in my own mind. Whatever you choose to have happen after you die immediately, that's what you can expect. And because you expect it, that's the first thing that you'll experience. Now, we also let go of mind. So expectation is a feature of mind. And as much as we have seen the physical body is not us, because we can see it, we do that with the mind as well. We separate ourselves from our thoughts and we can see the world we created out of the mind. And we see the mind as being a separate thing, a separate universe, a separate world that we've created as though it were the mental body, like the physical body was physical, then there's a mental body. And we separate from that, we see that, we don't think of ourselves as that, because that's actually not dying exactly, but it's no longer us. It's a, an artwork we've created and launched into reality. And we are now free of mind and therefore free of ego. And we, we start to know light on a very much deeper level. And so we experience infinite bliss joy and, and, and everything that we could possibly imagine, ecstasy. And, and that's a magnetic force that draws us towards the light, the, the center of it all. That's a summary of what might be taught in the Bardo states of Tibetan thinking, and it's my best understanding, and yeah, it'll do for now. I don't think we can ever know really very much more than these kind of rough draft things. The big question is what happens next. And in conversations with God, for example, the suggestion is that eternal life is a pendulum like event when we swing towards form and materiality and substance and then we swing back. And we swing towards spirit and another way of being ourselves. And every time we go through the swing, we go through the Godhead. So returning from this life, we go through God, but we swing out the other side, as it were. And on the other side, we don't have a physical body. We just have a sense of self disincarnate. You know, we, we, we have a different function there. Our function here in the physical world, in the world of form, really, is experience. We seek to experience what we think we know, to check it out, to get feedback about whether or not what's in the mind reflected into the physical world works for us. We get feedback about that. And then when we swing into the spiritual side, we look to understand the meaning of our experiences. 
we're seeking knowledge then and understanding and, and development of, of wisdom, shall we say. And then we swing back again and we experience what we think we know to see if that checks out and so on, swinging throughout eternity, every time going through the Godhead. And the most important thing I would say that we learn, and we can certainly learn this in this lifetime, is that reality is our choice. God the Creator is creating stuff. And it's like a holistic principle, a, a fractal principle. God can't create anything which is not godlike. However, would that be possible? We can only ever create something like us. It's, it's absurd to think otherwise because the materiality or whatever you call it of what we put into the world is from us. So it must be like us. And that's true of God. God has created us in his own image. So Christians teach. So we don't know what God is in any other way except the creator. That's what we're defining as God. So God is creative. So we are creative. And that's it. If you understand those two things, that we have free will completely throughout eternity without restriction on the one hand, and we are creative on the other, then you will understand the meaning of life is to be godlike and to be able, willing, and enjoy and love being creative and creating the world that we have, the world that we observe and perceive, all of that, everything that you believe, everything that you experience, everything that you think, is an aspect of your creative artwork. And the creative artwork is soul expression, shall we call it, throughout eternity. So death is just the end of this chapter. A part of your creative artwork was to say, let's have a go at being this person in this time period with that family and doing this career and so on and so forth and having these emotional ups and downs let's write a movie almost like that and i want to experience that because that's what i think would work and then at the end of that experience just as you approach death you think yeah okay i got a few things wrong i'll have to do better next time but i got a lot of things right and i i feel good about myself Particularly, I feel good about that aspect of myself and, and this aspect. And that favouring of a certain aspect of your, your being will be what carries you forward and, and in a certain way, the attitude in which you're carried forward. So that will inform what happens next on the spiritual level when you haven't got a body next and eventually you might well choose to incarnate again and have that kind of experience to develop further in that direction. And you'll have oversight into this when you kind of move away from this physical body. You get to see the, the, the overall plan of things and how there's um, a, a logic to your life experiences which you didn't really fully understand. You might have got a glimpse of, an intuitive sense of, and you might have turned into the model that you have of reality. You'll get a, a further expansion of that depth of understanding. So, all in all, when we leave this world of lies, this terrible place, it gets to be good at last. It gets to be free of all that. Except, if you want to continue the horror story, then you have free will to do that. Now, this is the key mystery. If you go to a movie, any movie, anywhere, on, the, on this planet, on Earth, do you go to horror stories ever? Do you ever look at horror stories? I, I, I won't go. You, you know, you might go to a thriller or a romantic movie and, and get into slushy feelings or whatever. Or do you look at, you know, other types of movies which are spiritually based and peaceful? Because not very many of us go to watch the grass grow when we go to a movie. You know, just sit there for an hour and a half watching the grass grow peacefully and having heavenly harp music play. Very few of us do that. That's not what we consider to be a good way to invest our time. Well, that doesn't change after we die. There is no sense in which we just sit on the heavenly throne and listen to harp music forever. How boring can you get? 
we don't create boring movies when we go to the cinema and we won't create boring movies when we move into our next incarnation and some people want horror stories for some reason that i can't understand other people want murder mysteries other people want violence and some people want to watch sex that other people are doing and, and stuff like that and that, that's what they want that's their life experience and until they've had that experience they won't know what's going on in their mind for some people like master zen practitioners what they choose to do is to just sit quietly watching their breath watching the grass grow those people can watch the grass grow and have a great time and when they die they don't even notice it <laughs> They, they, it doesn't really matter if they're in meditation and then they they die. They they kind of don't don't really know for a while that they're that they've moved on. It doesn't make a lot of difference because in the next life they want to continue just being. That's what I mean when I say grow, watching the grass grow. Just enjoy it, enjoyment of being. We don't have to do anything to get a sense of satisfaction. And there's the mystery. I would suggest. If you're dying now and you're closer to death and is comfortable, then learn how to fully exalt in the sense of beingness. You can't do very much anymore. You, you, you've had that. You've had your experiences. Your next life will not bring you into the realm of experience quite so much as it will bring you into the realm of knowledge. And when you just tune into your beingness, without agenda, without intention, then you just find you know things. You don't study anymore, but you just know, you have knowledge. And in anticipation of what will happen following your death, it would be a good thing to prepare like that. So as we approach death, it's quite a good strategy to slow down, to be able to breathe as an activity to know how to meditate, to know how not to expect excitement in your life, to reduce all of those things in your life, you know, just to slow down and appreciate that you exist. And the that's the sum total of the, the whole wisdom. If before dying you simply appreciate that you exist and you're of good faith, you're strong in your faith that this is always going to improve throughout eternity, then that will carry you through to the next world quite comfortably. And you don't have to worry about what's next. Dying is the problem, not death. And dying is a problem because of people not doing this. If we were only relax and allow ourselves to be taken to the next realm, everything would be fine. So don't worry so much about death. Just get your dying sorted out. And I'm saying, learn to meditate. I'll do it. Mm -hmm.